Hello. In this video, we are going to look at a technique in kinetics to determine the rate constants for some very fast reactions called the temperature or P-jump relaxation method. In this method, we take a system that is currently at equilibrium. We induce a very sudden temperature change of somewhere between 6 to 10 degrees Celsius and then monitor the system as it relaxes to a new equilibrium. Specifically in this video, we are going to generate uh, experimental data theoretically from some given parameters. We are going to uh, look at what the relaxation curve would look like in the experimental case. And then we're going to take that curve as if it were a real experimental case and show how we could use it to go back and determine the rate constants for this particular reaction. The reaction we're going to monitor is this A to Z reaction, where K1 is the rate constant in the forward direction, K2 is the rate constant in the reverse direction, D is the difference between the current concentration of the product Z and its equilibrium concentration, and we assign this particular value N is the total of the concentrations of A and Z. For the, both the forward and reverse reactions, we're going to have the same pre-exponential factor, 1.54 times 10 to the 13th power. The energy of activation for the forward reaction is 100 kilojoules per mole, and the uh, energy of activation for the reverse reaction is going to be 95 kilojoules per mole. Our initial temperature is 300 degrees Kelvin. The forward rate constant is 5.97 times 10 to the minus 5 inverse seconds. The rate constant K2 for the reverse reaction is 4.43 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. And the equilibrium constant at this initial temperature is 0.1347. At this initial temperature, the value of N is 0 0.11347. That gives the uh, initial equilibrium concentration of A as 0 0.1 molar. And the initial equilibrium concentration for the product Z is 0 0.01347. At the final temperature of the T jump is 306 degrees Kelvin. And now the forward rate constant is 1.31 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. The rate constant for the reverse reaction is 9.36 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. And now the uh, equilibrium constant is 0 0.1401. At the final temperature of 306 degrees Kelvin, notice that N is still the same, it hasn't changed, 0 0.11347.
but now the uh, equilibrium concentration of A is 0 0.99526 molar, and the equilibrium concentration of Z, the product, is 0 0.013946. Here is a relaxation curve for this experiment. Notice that it starts at 300 degrees Kelvin. The uh, equilibrium concentration of Z is 0 0.01347. So that's the uh, red line all the way at the left. Notice that it is flat, which shows us that during that flat period, we are in a condition of equilibrium. That's when we're at the 300 degree Kelvin. Notice at the arrow, at time t equals zero, when the red curve begins to rise, that is the point at which we have done the t-jump from 300 Kelvin to 306 Kelvin. Since we are not, uh, the red line is not flat, notice that we are no longer at equilibrium once we've done the temperature jump. The reaction continues until we notice that the red line, the concentration of Z, starts to plateau, which tells us that we have now reached a new equilibrium, and this equilibrium concentration of Z is 0 0.013946. The solid blue arrows uh, denote the difference in the equilibrium concentrations of Z from 300 degree Kelvin to 306 degree Kelvin. This will be denoted by the letter uh, D sub zero. That is the uh, initial difference between the equilibrium concentrations at 300 Kelvin and 306 Kelvin. We now examine the graph to find the point at which the red curve, the current concentration of Z, is such that the uh, difference between it and the new equilibrium value at 306 degrees Kelvin is 1 over E of the way from Z initial to Z final. So here we notice that the difference between the uh, current value of Z and the equilibrium value at 306, that is our letter D. D sub zero is the initial difference, which we see by the blue arrows on the right-hand side. So we are interested at the point when this ratio is equal to 1 over E. So the time along the x-axis that's required for this difference in the y-axis to take place is our relaxation time tau. So here we see tau, um, by examining the graph, gives us a time, a relaxation time of 940 seconds.
Now what we want to do is take that information that we got experimentally from the curve, the relaxation time, and use it to calculate the rate constants K1 and K2. Now we know from a previous derivation that the relaxation time for a reaction of the form A going to Z is 1 over K1 plus K2. We saw that experimentally from the graph, this is equal to 940 seconds. So therefore, we get an expression for the sum K1 plus K2. It's 1 over 940 seconds. So that gives us 0 0.0010638 inverse seconds. So that gives us the sum. We also know that the equilibrium constant K1 divided by K2 is equal to 0 0.1401. we can use the equilibrium constant to get a relationship between K1 and K2. K1 is equal to 0 0.1401 times K2. Then we substitute that value for K1 into our expression K1 plus K2 equals 1 over 940 seconds. So that gives us that 1.1401 K2 is equal to 0 0.0010638 inverse seconds. We can simply solve for K2, and then we get that the uh, our calculated value for K2 is 9.33 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. And if we compare that to the value that we use to generate the data in the first place, this is an excellent agreement. We go back to use our relationship between K1 and K2 that we got from the equilibrium constant. The K1 is equal to 0 0.1401 times K2. We've uh, derived K2 already. That's our 9.33 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. So multiplying this out, we get that K1 is equal to 1.31 times 10 to the minus 4 inverse seconds. And notice that when we did our uh, experimental data, we only plotted points um, for every 20 seconds. And even that was sufficient to give us excellent agreement with the uh, initial values that we uh, assigned for rate constants K1 and K2. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.